Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. In the vast expanse of the world's oceans, where the horizon meets the sky, carrier strike groups emerge as titans of naval prowess. These formidable assemblies, central to the United States Navy's strategic might, command the seas with a fusion of technology, power, and precision. Carrier Strike Group offers tremendous offensive capability, and they're a wonderful tool, and that variability and that versatility is what I think is the ESG's calling card, and we've heard some compare it to the Swiss Army knife, if you will, where there are lots of tools that you can use for many different situations. At the heart of each group lies an aircraft carrier, a floating fortress surrounded by a phalanx of at least one cruiser, destroyer, or frigate. Accompanying these giants are about 7,500 dedicated personnel and a carrier air wing comprising 65 to 70 aircraft, each a marvel of modern aviation. Occasionally, this naval entourage is augmented by the stealthy presence of submarines alongside indispensable logistics and supply vessels. More than mere formations, CSGs are the embodiment of American maritime strength. For the last 248 years, our Navy's been underway around the world, operating alongside our allies and partners in dynamic maritime domains to preserve the peace while preparing for war. A single supercarrier wields enough firepower to rival entire national air forces. Transitioning from their historic moniker of carrier battle groups, these strike groups are now often identified by the names of their lead carriers, such as the illustrious Enterprise Strike Group. As of March 2023, the U.S. Navy proudly sails with 11 carrier strike groups. each a symbol of unyielding commitment to global sea dominance and security. Diving deeper into the operational intricacies of carrier strike groups, one encounters the vital yet often understated realm of replenishment operations. These are the lifeblood of sustained naval capability ensuring that carriers are continuously equipped with essential resources, ranging from consumables and food to ordnance. The orchestration of these operations is a ballet of precision and efficiency, critical for maintaining the strike group's readiness and effectiveness. In the unique environment of the open sea, replenishment operations are a marvel of logistics. One of the key procedures involves the transfer of ordnance and supplies between carriers. This is typically executed through an aerial ballet. Helicopters adeptly transport payloads from one vessel to another. This method not only ensures a steady supply of vital materials, but also exemplifies the agility and adaptability of naval forces. Such operations are meticulously planned and executed, reflecting the strategic importance of resource management in maritime warfare. Yeah. 
The ability to replenish ordnance swiftly and efficiently can often be the deciding factor in the success of prolonged naval engagements, making these operations a cornerstone of carrier strike group functionality. Another critical dimension of carrier strike group operations is the conduct of flight operations, particularly those involving fighter jets. These aircraft are pivotal in exerting long-range damage in naval warfare, serving as both a deterrent and a decisive force in combat scenarios. Take, for instance, the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS Harry S. Truman. As part of its regular deployment schedule, this carrier engages in continuous operations that play a crucial role in upholding maritime security across international waters. The deployment of Truman and its accompanying strike group is a vital component of the ongoing rotation of U.S. forces committed to maintaining global maritime security. A significant aspect of these operations is the integration and training with NATO forces, as exemplified by exercises like Neptune Strike. In one notable instance on February 3, 2022, during Neptune Strike, U.S. F-A-18 Super Hornets and Greek F-16 Fighting Falcons conducted air-to-air -air training over the Ionian Sea. This exercise underscored the seamless integration of high-end maritime capabilities within a carrier strike group. enhancing operational readiness across the Alliance. Furthermore, it highlighted the defense and protection capabilities extended to all allies. Neptune Strike 2022 marked a historic moment, the first instance since the Cold War that a full U.S. carrier group came under NATO command. This integration not only demonstrates the strategic flexibility and interoperability of carrier strike groups, but also emphasizes the United States' commitment to NATO and its role in collective defense. Delving into the vital components of carrier strike groups, the guided missile cruisers and destroyer squadrons stand out for their pivotal roles. representing the core of a carrier strike group surface and air defense capabilities. Central to their armament is the MK-15 Phalanx close-in weapon system. A fast reaction, radar-guided 20-millimeter gun weighing 13,600 pounds. This formidable weapon can unleash 4,500 rounds per minute against anti-ship missiles and aircraft, and 3,000 rounds per minute for asymmetric threats. With a magazine capacity of 1,550 rounds. The 20mm CIWS, firing armor-piercing discarding Sabin ammunition, is specifically designed for penetrating armored targets. These cruisers and destroyers equipped with such advanced technology not only provide vital protection to the aircraft carriers, but also enhance the offensive and defensive reach of the entire strike group, asserting dominance across sea and air theaters. Moreover, in the sophisticated weaponry of carrier strike groups, the standard missile family, especially the medium-to-long-range surface-to-air standard missile 6, 
plays a pivotal role in safeguarding against anti-ship missiles, aircraft, and threats skimming the water surface. The U.S. Navy and 15 Allied navies employed the SM-2 missile as their chief air defense missile, utilizing its Block 3, 3A, 3B, and 4 variants. The SM-2, with a wingspan of about 3.5 feet, a length of 15.5 feet, a diameter of 13.5 inches and weighing approximately 1,560 pounds is a key component of the Aegis combat system. Hey. This integrated naval weapon system, which is installed on the U.S. Navy's Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers and Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers, as well as on Allied nations' vessels, employs the SM-2, SM-6, and other defenses like the evolved Sea Sparrow missile to shield Navy fleets from aerial and missile threats. <laughs> Torpedoes represent another crucial element in the arsenal of carrier strike groups, especially in the context of destroyers. These vessels are equipped with torpedoes specifically designed to intercept and neutralize underwater threats. Demonstrating the multi-dimensional warfare capabilities of the strike groups. Torpedo exercises are a regular and essential part of naval training, ensuring readiness and operational efficiency. A notable example is the torpedo exercise conducted by the Royal Canadian Navy frigate HMCS Winnipeg during Rim of the Pacific 2022 on July 21st. This exercise was part of the larger RIMPAC event, which took place from June 29th to August 4th in and around the Hawaiian Islands and Southern California. RIMPAC 2022, the 28th in the series that started in 1971, was a massive undertaking featuring 26 nations, 38 ships, three submarines, over 170 aircraft, and 25,000 personnel. So the largest challenge of doing something like this is trying to get all the countries and all the ships in the right spot at the same time. Um, one of the biggest uh, things is trying to get all the, um, the engineering, the communications, the procedures all locked down so that everybody is doing the same thing all at once. It stands as the world's largest international maritime exercise, providing unparalleled training opportunities and fostering cooperative relationships vital for the safety of sea lanes and global maritime security. As we witness these strike groups navigate the complexities of modern naval warfare, they not only represent the pinnacle of maritime military technology, but also symbolize a steadfast commitment to peace and stability in international waters. From the awe-inspiring might of aircraft carriers and their air wings to the sophisticated defense systems of guided missile cruisers and destroyers, and the crucial role of torpedo-equipped vessels in undersea warfare, each element plays a pivotal role in maintaining naval supremacy. Exercises like RIMPAC underscored the importance of international cooperation and preparedness in preserving the safety of the world's oceans. That's the end of this video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.